Hello, everyone. Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. So, what are we going to talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, stock market conditions, I have a lot to say about that. And we'll talk a little bit about crypto or a lot of bit about crypto. Your questions on trading. If you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides, just so my ADD doesn't kick in. But then when we get to the live charts, feel free to, about, free to ask about anything else. Also, wait till we get live charts for your stock picks and crypto picks, too. And uh, while we're on crypto, once we get to the live crypto, uh, if you don't mind, keep your uh, ask about your crypto uh, picks then so we don't have to go back and forth. Anyway, I'll let housekeeping out the way. We're going to focus tonight on continuing to do the trading stuff. As I've been saying quite a bit, really cognizant of what I'm doing, my ups, my downs, emotions, and losses, and gains, and money management, and things of that nature. And a lot of that will come out tonight. I wanted to do a walkthrough just real quick on the open portfolio. Uh, I get questions about the landing list all the time. I want to talk about that, it versus the official recommendations. And then I want to talk a little bit about crypto, or maybe a lot of bit about crypto, do some live crypto hunting, and then we'll get to the live charts and you can ask about your individual stocks. As a disclaimer screen, and as you know, you can lose money trading or often summing up all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. As I've been saying, I've acknowledged them for the last several months. I've been really cognizant again of what I'm doing. And in some cases, you could just buy things that go up and sell things that go down and the idea is that you have some greater fool coming along and we didn't have a whole lot of greater fools in crypto today and we'll get to that in the end but there might have been one or two now before we get out get into all that what's the difference between the landry list and official recommendations the landry list is a list i publish every night as part of my trading service and then i also have an official recommendation so official recommendations are designed to show the methodology in action. They're designed to be a model of what's possible by waiting for entries and, and being very selective in your stock picking, using protective stops, taking partial profits, and trailing a stop higher, and then widening out a stop to hopefully, and I know you said hope, but get into a longer term winner. The Landry list are stocks that I'm watching Usually, if I take a, a, a trade outside of the service, it's in the Landry list. Occasionally, obviously, I reserve the right to take other trades. But for the most part, if you're seeing the Landry list, you're seeing my actual call list for the next day. And I work really hard at night to put together the best set of stocks because, hey, I, I'm trading them too. And I like to provide sort of ancillary ideas. Maybe some of the stocks might be a little bit more volatile might be a little thinner. They might be setting up and I might want to keep an eye on them. And let's say if it's too volatile, I can't make it an official recommendation or it's a little bit on the thinner side. I can't make it an official recommendation, but you guys obviously are free to trade them at your discretion. And just because I get so many questions about the trading service, even though there's however many years, I know there's a gap in there, so I've got to figure out Fine, you know, go in the garage and dig out all my old PCs. I used to go through three or four PCs a year um, and find the find the hard drives for some of the services because I think I've been doing this for 20 years. But there's quite a few years of service in, in the archives, DaveLeonard.com slash archives. And, and that's, by the way, not to get digressed too far, imagine that. But that's one reason I don't bother with, with trials. I, I've tried it before and people... Hey, can I get a trial? Yeah, here's your trial. And then a week later, hey, what'd you think? Oh, I never got around to looking at it. It's like, well, if you pay for something, you tend to be more inclined to look at it because you're a little skin in a game. But now I don't want it to be a mystery. So I've got however many years out there, years and years and years of archives, go through the uh, go through them in reverse chronological order, go or the, the last ones first, if that's the right way of saying that. Just to get a feel for what's happening, good, bad, and different. You might want to look at a summer, you know, because because summers often suck. <laughs> you know, every now and then we'll have a, a couple of big winners, but I mean, you have to trade through them just in case. And I think a couple of big winners in our portfolio were came from last summer. So if we'd have blown up the entire summer, we might be missing that actual um, 
big winner or two that we really needed. George, just thanks for the clarification. Yeah, if you go here, uh, George, Dave, that's why I put this this fact thing out there. You know, I put all this stuff out out there, and then people have a hard time finding it still. And that's one reason I did the learning management system is I went through not so much the core methodology in the in the um, trading service, but the core methodology in general because and people are like, well, Dave, why do you beat the dead horse so much? And like I said last week, a week before, I could say the same thing a hundred times, and then I'll still get questions on that same thing. And that's part of the the learning management system and why we why I did so, those things and. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, expense that goes into that, and that's why I, I charge for that. And also, I believe that having skin in the game makes life a lot easier. And then, as you know, you can ask, you can always ask questions in the Facebook group, which you have to at least be a gold member, so we know that everybody's on the same page and everybody's got a little skin in the game, and everybody's, you know, trying to trade uh, or working to trade, I should say, the same methodology in general. Anyway, so Landry lists are, are just it's kind of ancillary ideas and, and a couple other things out there. And, you know, and I, and I can think every now and then and I'll miss one myself from the Landry list and kick myself in the butt for the next 10 years, such as TLRY. But if you guys, what are you guys picks up on it and you, you get a winner that's, that makes your year, makes your life, <laughs> then you'll probably remember me and, and stay on the trading service for a long time. Okay. So along the lines of Landry list, a couple of nights ago, I said at five o'clock, my time, central time, tomorrow, if this thing gaps lower, it could be the mother of all opening gap reversals. And that's what it did. And I'm a little disappointed because it didn't turn into the mother of all opening gap reversals. But you know, it was much better than a poke in the eye. And here, here are the trades I did at one of my more active accounts. I did take it in, in more than one account, but I really didn't do fantastic in the other accounts because I was trying to hold on. I was I was thinking this thing could get to 64. And I was trying to hold on for like a 10 point gain. And that's where I made a mistake in the cash account. And, and you don't want to go in and out in the cash account as you probably know, because your settled funds will get eaten up really, really, really quick. I mean, this is 100, 200, 200, 100, 100, 200. You know, that's, that's uh, 10 grand a pop, you know, and you do that five or 10 times or 15 times. <laughs> And especially if you're trading in and out of other positions and you're waiting for those settled funds to clear, you run out of room really quick. So I try not to get super active in that account. And, and it kind of burned me a little bit. I think I, I might've got a little greedy, but this is the one of my more active accounts. And I made about 1K on it. I think I could have done maybe a little bit better, but I'm not gonna complain about having a thousand dollars that I didn't have the day before. And that was $400 on an option position, which I have in here. And options are tricky, especially if you're going to do an intraday trade on options. So I don't want to get too far into that. But I was looking at the call, and it looked like it was it was reasonable at the time. And I know it's kind of expensive, and I don't remember exactly what the stock was at that time. But I, you kind of have to anticipate the move. And again, I know it's kind of complex to get into options, but I was kind of anticipating that it would move and I wanted to be positioned. I only bought two of them, but still it was a $1,200 investment. But you could see all the trades here. And the idea was to go in and play that opening gap reversal. Now, if you're a gold member and you want to know more about opening gap, opening gap reversals, go to the members section. And in Q&A, we talk a lot about opening gap reversals. In fact, as I've said quite a bit, it's almost like the it's almost like if you go through that Q and A, you're thinking, boy, this guy just just does open a gap reversals. Well, it's only a small part of what I do, but every now and then you tend to have quite a few of these things setting up, and it makes it worthwhile. But the rest of the time, you might sit around and wait and wait and wait. And it seems to be whenever I am patient and I wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, the opening gap reversal is almost like put your money down, pick your money up. So, but Dave, are you saying these things always work? No, that's what I'm saying. They don't always work. And you really need to wait for a, a big momentum stock like this, something that institutions probably want to own. Um, you, you want to have some sort of news event, ideally, to, to just knock, knock it down. And especially, one thing that works especially well is if you have a big knockout bar like this, 
And then you had that follow through selling on the open that kind of exhausted itself. Now you have to be you have to be really careful with these. Let's say you get in around let's say 52 and this thing begins to implode, you just have to get out the way. And you might get a second chance later in the day. But they could be a wonderful opportunity. And again, $600 was stock and $400 was options. Now, if you if you watch the recording of this and hit pause, you'll see that I did kind of get a little greedy in here and try to flip in and out of some shares and I tended to fail miserably in doing that, or I didn't, I certainly didn't make much. I think I lost a little bit in doing that. It just shows you that I'm not a scalper. Some of you are. Now, just real quick, I want to do a run through on the open portfolio. And this was APG, and this is one that triggered last summer. Maybe it's the one I was thinking about. Nice deep pullback on a, I think this was an IPM. And then entry was here, initial profit target was here. And the reason we take that initial profit target as I preach is because we don't know if the trend will continue. There's also a psychological aspect to it too. And it's interesting. I just read a book that, that I are reading a book, uh, SFO options. Now SFO, something about uh, trading psychology. So it's a list of articles written uh, in book format on trading psychology. And I've been having this book forever, probably 10 years. I'm just getting around to reading it. And um, I used to have a really bad fetish where I'd order just a, a boatload of books. <laughs> and uh, it takes me a while to get around to reading them, especially in, in more recent years. But anyway, one of the things they talk about is the psychological aspect of taking partial profits. And it's like, wow, I've been talking about that forever. And then here I read it in a book and it just kind of makes you feel feel good. Anyway, this is the trailing stop. And one reason I wanted to show, especially the current portfolio is, look at all this time here where this stock did absolutely nothing. And it would have been really easy to give up. And then look at these wide and loose moves here where, day after day after day i had to tell my peeps hey look this thing is not trending but maybe it's consolidating as part of like a longer term trend and you wouldn't want to jump in at any given point during this wide and loose range but since we're free rolling and we're giving a, lots of room to to do what it has to do maybe just maybe it'll go on and make new highs and ARLP was another one of these guys that did that. Nice little uptrend, little pullback. Entry, initial protective stop was hit. And then you could see it just took forever to build this base. But the bigger the base, the bigger the launch into space, which I thought I said, but some guy named Ralphie, Akampora. But anyway, you could see lots and lots of consolidations in here. And if you just kind of squint your eyes, it looked like this thing just went up. It was this fantastic growth stock. But if you're living through this day after day after day after day after day, it can really grind you down. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to get out of this and move on to something else. Now, as I've said before, the trading service helps me to follow my plan. And I can tell you right now, there's been many, 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 many stocks, a few of them that I saw take off today. Without me, of course, where I get a little bored during this sideways range and I go off to chase another stock somewhere. But the beauty of the trading service is it forces me to watch it. Like I went through a pretty bad drawdown today on some of my ancillary picks, some things that are outside of the, the core methodology. And I was pretty bummed out about them. And then I see a lot of losses, at least early on, with some of the core methodology trades. And I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do about that because I have to follow the system and I have to continue to show the portfolio every night. I want to make sure that I continue to mirror the portfolio and I I, I get the, the good with the bad, you know, and it just makes it a lot easier by having that plan out there. So from a selfish standpoint, the, the educational business really helps me out in a lot of ways that are a lot more profitable than the educational business in and of itself. Anyway, here's ASO, IPO, it took off and then began to pull back a little bit. Entry was here. You can see it kind of stalled out immediately. And, you know, I might have got a little impatient with this thing had I not been following the service and hit the IPT. And then we've been trailing the stock for a long, long time. 
And again, this looks like a great longer term growth stock. And if you if you're looking at like uh, like they show these weekly charts in these books and they make it look like it just goes straight up forever. And like, oh, look at that. I was just holding that forever. It's like, well, it's a lot harder than it looks. But again, if you have that plan in place and you're following that plan, your life gets a lot easier. CFLT, this one, this one tested out patience quite a bit. IPO, it kind of died out at first. And that's one of my favorite patterns in IP. Well, I have every pattern in IP is my favorite pattern. Uh, I guess the buy is probably my all-time favorite. But you can see it took off and imploded. I call this the fly, the die, and then it fly again. Then you look to get long on a pullback. And that's when an IPO trades more like the core methodology as opposed to those breakout patterns. Nice little pullback here. It triggered an entry, I forget on which day. It might've triggered on this day here, I think. And then it immediately came right back in. I'm like, oh boy, here we go again. And it took off and then all of a sudden it comes right back in. I'm like, oh boy. And then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then finally rallies up, hits the IPT. And then we trail the stop higher. And we'll see what happens. And that's a pretty, you know, one thing that's tough is, is giving up those open profits. As I've said, ad nauseum. Richard Dennis of the Turtles, one of the the two lead turtles, him and Eckert, or were the fearless leaders, I guess. He was okay with the turtles giving up open profits. He was more concerned about the turtles having losses on trades because open profits come with the territory. And I read or heard somewhere that some of the turtles would get frustrated because they'd had these huge open profits and Dennis would encourage them to hold on to them. Here's one not making any money yet. I want to show you the good with the bad. And by the way, we did have a couple that a couple of turds lately, so don't want to make it look like they always work. I know everybody here <laughs> who's I think most everybody here tonight's on the service, so you you're like amen to that, brother, uh, brother Dave. But uh, I wanted to show you the live portfolio just so we could follow up on it in upcoming webinars. So anyway, this is uh, Sovo, nice little uptrend, nice little pullback. You can see one of these fake out type of triggers again, and it really hasn't done much since. And I think we're slightly in the water with that one. This one was a little unorthodox, but I did like it as an IPO, even though it was a little choppy. But it's that, that die and then fly pattern too. Sometimes they come public and die. I think the, the one earlier was a fly, a die. This one just died out, but that's okay. Sometimes the company gets their act together. They, all the people that are anxious to buy it get shaken out, and then uh, a new trend is able to develop. In this case, though, it's just kind of going sideways forever, and it's really, really testing our patience. And I'd be willing to bet that I would say three quarters of my clients have probably already exited this a long, long time ago. And I can see that I saw some of the frustration in Facebook group, and believe me, I feel your pain. And the only reason I haven't gotten out is because I'm no nah, George is in. Good job, George. Proud of you, man. Man, that's a that's a testament. That's a testament of following the plan. Good job. Very impressed. George is a little newer to trading and um he's going through the ups and downs. And uh let me tell you something, George. Those ups and downs never go away. <laughs> Believe me. It, it would, I could I could tell you when the downs are gonna come. Right when you feel it like you got it all figured out, and right when you made a shit ton of money. Probably the next day. I mean, that was my day today. Anyway, but you can see it's done absolutely nothing but just chop around. But there's nothing to do. Even though it's long, it's not trending, maybe it's just having a long extended rest. So here's the open portfolio. It's looking really good now in one for two reasons. One, we've got some nice big winners in here. We've been in forever. And two, we got knocked out of some stinkers. Okay. And that makes it look a lot better. And, and and psychologically, if you think about it, by weeding out the bad stocks or letting them stop out, not always, but in a case like this, where you got some longer term winners you're just holding on to for dear life, you look at this portfolio every day and even if you get whacked a few thousand dollars, you're like, hey, well, you know what? I'm still way ahead of the game longer term. And even though I had a couple of losers in here, a couple of these big winners, I'm gonna take care of it all. So anyway, I just want to kind of briefly show the methodology in action. Uh, last couple of weeks, I talked about the fact when it comes to crypto, a lot of people are going to poo-poo it, and, and that's fine. 
but with a bubble like this, you got to realize in the meantime, you can make a lot of bubble, a lot of money. And of course, the money management is key, which I'm going to harp upon now. But if you miss this bubble, what which next bubble are you going to miss? Okay. And the same people that missed this bubble, did they miss the NASDAQ bubble? Okay. That when the NASDAQ went up 400% or whatever. And yeah, it ended badly. It went down 77% as I've been preaching, giving these little speeches each week about the crypto and all. And crypto will probably crash. I mean, today sure felt like the beginning of the end, right? But for the most part, in the meantime, you can make a lot of money. And the other thing I was thinking about right before going live is if you are a trader, you shouldn't care. Now, you could you could short these things. If, if you firmly believe these things are crap, that you could short a little bit more complex. I don't want to get into too much of that, but I've recently discovered some brokerages actually have inverse shares that go up when the crypto goes down. And, and I didn't make much money doing it today, but I made a tiny, tiny bit of money. It helped to mitigate some of my losses, especially my open losses, by messing around with those a little bit. But right now, I feel like I want to try to focus mostly on the bull side because I don't want to play both ends against the middle too much. But as I preach, it does help to see both sides of the market. And that's why I am a big fan of trading both sides of the market, especially in something like stocks. So you'll be able to recognize that, okay, this looks like a short. I should not be buying this stock. Now, yesterday I was thinking, is the SHYT about to get real? Staples Center is now the crypto.com arena, also known as the shitcoin center. Now, let's not start kissing each other just yet. You can see what Bitcoin did the next day. It did not look too good today, and most crypto didn't look too good. Now, CRO did really, really well. I'm going to talk about that in one second. Now, even today, even though it was kind of crappy, it was crappy. All, it was crappy pretty much across the board for me. <laughs> but even though crypto wasn't that fantastic, it was downright crappy. This one, I came in this morning, like early, early this morning. I think it was maybe 5 a.m. I forget when I saw it. That's the other thing, too, by the way. And I talked about this. I have a list of um, issues that I want to discuss over the next few weeks in crypto. I've been keeping a, a running list of these. But one of the things is that sometimes you're in one, let's say you get into this one right here, and then you take your initial profits off, and this thing like doubles overnight while you're sleeping. So it's like you got to figure out how to capitalize on that. But today in this one, and just I just bought it because it was going up. I ended up buying it here and then flipped out half here, and I brought that stop up the animations. Uh, backwards on here but the, i brought the stop up to break even and i actually let it got, actually got away from me a little bit i forgot to raise the stop so i got out at a tiny loss on the first loaf but overall i did okay and uh here's the trades down here you can see and went in with a market order when it was breaking out and then a limit order at right here, 239. So it was a 20% IPT. And lately, just because they're so damn volatile, I've just been putting it at 20% IPT. And, and I think eventually you're going to have, I'm, I'm going to have to work harder with the volatility to, to, to do more reasonable IPTs. Like, I don't think you can put in a 20% IPT now in Bitcoin. But that thing, uh, what was the time on that? So let's see. I got in this morning. Does this have a timestamp? No, it doesn't have a timestamp on it. But anyway, the other thing I did was, as I've been saying lately, the inner nerd in me, of course, looked into Bitcoin mining. And it's a lot of, it's, it's, it's not as, as easy as it looks and, and oh, well, I'll get this machine, it makes $20 a day. Well, that machine's gonna cost you $10,000 and that $20 a day does factor in electricity, but depends on where you live. It might only make $10 a day. And then 
keeping that thing running, they're um, they're high maintenance. Also, the the life cycle on them is is not that long. And on top of that, and I know I've talked about all this in prior videos, but on top of that, the 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 technology moves so fast. You could go on eBay right now and buy brand new ASIC miners for $199. And I think that's shipped. The caveat is they're like S3 ant miners or whatever they call them. And you would lose about $7 a day or $5 a day, depending on your electricity costs running that thing. So anyway, a lot of, a lot of issues with the, with the mining, so to speak. So what I've been toying with is, is there a way to kind of mine these through trading? And what I've been doing is if I make, let's say in this case, put a, th put a thousand in and I'm e immediately up like $200 and I'm taking half off. So I'll take $50 and stick it on the side. And that might be a little bit much based on the on the profit that I'm looking for. But the idea was to take off a little bit and put aside, put it aside, so to speak, to collect mine these things. So $50, if you had a miner running, that might take you weeks or even a month or, or longer, provided that doesn't break and all that other good stuff. How do you work the orders for IPT and stop? Well, what I do, and this isn't the ideal thing, and this is another one of my issues I have to have to deal with, is and I do the same thing in stocks too on the intraday trades. As soon as I put the order in, I immediately calculate what my limit is going to be, and then I kind of eyeball where my stop should be on the position. So I don't know if these are in a chronological order. They might not be. So you can see I bought it. Okay, here we go. So look, I bought it at, at 199 okay? So 20% higher is 239 on that, okay? And then my stop was at 180. Now, I haven't done the whole math on this, but I just figured this thing took off. It shouldn't come back to 180. And fortunately for me, it went to 239 first before it came back in. Now, keep in mind, and I'm just kind of seeing this as I'm going through it, and, and, and I've been thinking about it a little bit too. The 50 bucks, I guess, is a lot if you're only taking $100 in profit. But the idea is to let the rest of the position run to, to free roll. And we'll take a look at my open positions in just one second. So again, I, I mined off 50 bucks out of position. And what I'm doing is I'm copying those over or, or moving those over. And I'm either staking them, which I'll talk a little bit about in one second, or I'm just hanging on to them in another account if they can't be staked. And I think you could actually lend these out. I don't know how much you need per coin to lend out. You might be able to make a little money doing that. But anyway, these, so what's kind of interesting here is, and I just saw this right before I went live. So this was $50 this morning and now it's $35, okay? So you can see that it's it's not, it, it's deteriorating real quick. Now, let me show you a couple of more things. So that, So you can see again, and these aren't too hot in here too. So these are the ones I've kind of mined, so to speak, over the last couple of weeks. Now, I just did some screen captures from earlier and you could see that on some of these, they're way more than $50. Now, there's two things that have happened. This crypto.com obviously was hot over the last few days and I was able to go in and out at least a couple of times. So that's a couple of 50s, right? And this might have a little bit older trade in there. Although I think this particular account has only been open for two weeks. So that one's somewhat substantial. Now, here's my thinking in this. And the trader in me, and I've been noodling with this a lot. Like, what am I going to do? Uh, am I really going to be able to sit on this? And, and I don't know. And, and, and like I said, this account's only been open a few weeks. And over that period of time, I, I mined, so to speak, about $3,000 worth of crypto. Okay. Now, I have losses, believe me. And, and today had a drawdown. And so I do have losses, so don't make it look like, I don't want to say like, put the clickbait out there like, hey, you know, this miner was free and I made $3,000. It, it's a little bit more complex than that. And when this was only a few hundred dollars or a thousand bucks, I was thinking, yeah, let's just let it go forever. But now that's two, $3,000, or once it got to about $2,000 or so, then it's 
begin to think this is really accumulating. But my thinking is if this bull market continues, okay, and something really takes off, then I'm going to have a piece, albeit a, a somewhat small piece. But let's say this Elon, I've got 81 million coins. <laughs> I know it makes you sound like you're somebody special. I had a billion of them, I think, a while back, or was it Shiba had a billion in? I forget. But you know, I'm not bragging. It's the big deal. <laughs> anyway, my thinking is maybe by mining these off, I could sit on them and and see what happens. Now, something that's interesting is on some of these you can actually stake them and I don't fully understand how staking works, but basically you you tie up your crypto and you let other people use it so to speak uh for proof of stake. And if you google that, you'll know a lot more about it than me. I don't get caught up too much in the details. But these are the ones over here that have been staked and in some cases like the C pool and I know it, it's it's probably all BS, but the annualized yield on this thing is 100%. So if you're willing to tie up your crypto now, what if it goes down 50%? I don't know. Maybe you break even if it does. But this is just an experiment I'm trying, and it's going to be really hard for the trader and me to hold on to these things, you know? And I have, I'm already thinking about how would I rebalance, you know? And maybe if I could just hold off and, and rebalance quarterly. And it, it, what's interesting is the ones that I thought would make it, like this OMG, I seem to remember that being a pretty good one to trade. But I can see down here that 50 bucks, at least 50 bucks went in, and now it's worth 22. This SLP, whatever that is, uh, smooth lotion potion or something. <laughs> stupid, you know? So if you're... If you're not trading these and you say they're stupid, I agree with you on the not trading them. And no, by the way, the if you're not trading because you don't trust the exchanges, then yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. I trust these exchanges about as far as I can throw them. And like I said last week and week before, if you're new to this, not that, you know, please don't take my advice as a, a financial advice. Talk to your financial advisor who's going to tell you not to do this, right? But if you want my opinion, I think something like Coinbase, which is publicly traded, would probably be under more scrutiny than a foreign exchange like the one I used here. You're not going to get a lot of these shit coins on Coinbase. And in some cases, maybe that's a good thing, you know, because if you look at this one here, I mean, I guess I got lucky, but it's worth half of what I put in here. Anyway, so that's the the mining, so to speak, that I've been doing a little bit outside of trading, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to stay in my wheelhouse, which is trading, and then generate some of these cryptocurrencies and kind of mine them, so to speak, as opposed to setting up a, a, a crypto mining form in my spare time. <laughs> now, again, it's not about the crypto. It's about being a trader and trading bubbles with a healthy dose of money management. And again, if you're bearish on these things, then short them, you know, and provided that you have some sort of pattern to short them and you're not just willy nilly in shorting them, right? And we'll take a look at some of those in just one second. Uh, this was one that I showed in yesterday's Trading Simplified show, which will be published tomorrow on my website on uh, November 19th. And the point I was trying to make in the uh, the stock chart show is it doesn't matter what the market is. It doesn't matter what the stock does. It doesn't matter if the crypto is BS or not, okay? What does matter is that some greater fools come along after you. And the reason I had a little question mark here was when I was doing my well, right as I was putting my slides together, the stock chart show, getting ready to do my recording, I saw this one was breaking out. Now, by the way, you can see back here, this little arrow. I was already free rolling on this one. And I don't know if it's in that, it, well, it will be in that list before. I don't know how much those tokens or whatever they called uh, are worth. But some of those came from this free rolling position from way back here. And what I did here was I did an add-on 
And if I'd have saw it a little earlier, and again, it's like you can't be in all places at all time, maybe I would have bought in a little earlier, but it just looked like there were greater fools coming along. And I was hoping to be able to flip it out to greater fools. And luckily I was, and you can see from 520 to 624, flipped them out, and then I mined off a little bit of those or I'll put them in stake, whatever the case is with this crypto. So it did go up and hit that. IPT. So as I've been preaching for weeks, emotional and irrational markets are a trader's best friend. Now let's take a look at the crypto real quick and then we're going to open, uh, let's go, let's open it up for uh, crypto picks and stock picks. The only thing, I, if you don't mind, put a dollar in front of your crypto picks, I know what they are, and let's do those first and get those out the way. And just so I don't flip back and forth between the, um, don't have to flip back and forth between the charting packages. I had an order last night on, on, on it. On what? Okay, Sherry wants to talk about Manor. Hello, Sherry, how are you? Let me see if I can get the screen shared. E and J 230. All right, good, good question. Glad you're asking that question. All right, let's do this. Okay. Now y'all bear with me a little bit because it's a little harder to just jump straight to symbols. I haven't figured it. If anybody knows how to do it, this is a uh, trading view. I do like the ACP platform. It's just that they haven't caught up to a lot of the crypto. I I I like to kind of pride myself into the fact that I was able to get a lot of uh, the crypto over to uh, stock charts on the crypto. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. Sometimes, again, you could just buy things that are going up. Sherry, I like that it's, it, uh, I've used that candle word again. <laughs> I guess I can't make fun of candles anymore, but I, I like, you know, my old eyes, I do like these candle charts. Um, You know, here's, here's a cool thing because, oh, actually, George asked, asked about this. Okay, uh, we'll get to man in one second. George says, I was getting ready to say, hey, look, it's a 230 EMA, and it is, okay? So I would say yes to this one. Now, one thing on my list is, you know, is it really thin? And, and one way to see if it's thin is notice that you, you do have a lot of tails. So this one can be a little thin. I have traded it before. But, yeah, George is saying it's in the 230. Okay, yeah, bar one, bar two, two lows above the 30 EMA. Yeah, enter above this high plus a little wiggle room. So that would be a 230 EM breakout system. Look back here, okay? And this is why, as I've been saying lately, I've been showing you simple systems because a simple system can work in an inefficient market, okay? In an emotional market. And look, bar one, bar two, give it a little wiggle room above that high. Entry would have been right around here. So that would have been a nice run. And I hope I caught some of that. Looks like I got an error on here. So I must have gotten some. It got stopped out. I need to go look and see if I've got any of that staked. I think I do. Good question, Paul. We'll get to that in just one second. And that's that's one of the issues. And I don't know if I've, I have it here, but I've talked about that before. Anyway, George, good eye on this one. Bar one, bar two, enter somewhere above the high. One of my favorite patterns right now, and maybe one of them will come up, is... When you have, there you go. This is looking pretty good. Okay, it looks like it's getting ready to go. I might front run it a little bit. I'm going to front run George. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get in, George. All right, that, this will be fun to watch. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'm getting too excited. It's funny when I do a show, everything looks so much better. And then afterwards, I was like, what was I thinking? All right, let's uh, let's go in at the market. Do 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 do. Y'all bear with me one second. Talk amongst yourselves. Hopefully I have cash in this account. I do not know. That's the dangers of live webinars, right? Let's back it off a little bit. Let's go ahead and just get in so I'm in. All right, here we go. Bam. Oops. Let's see what happens. All right, we're in. So let me put a little arrow in here. And uh, somebody remind me toward the end of the show, of course, I'll probably be watching it to uh, come back in to check it. But yeah, I front ran that one a little bit. Um, you know, I got to be careful. You can't get uh, 
you got to be real careful with um, getting sloppy, you know. And if the market is a raging bull market, then you'll do fine getting a little sloppy, okay. And so what I would do is I don't have a, a I have to remember after the show to put in an IPT, but an IPT three, what's 320 times 20%, like uh, 380 maybe, a little bit more. So I'll put an IPT at 380, okay. All right, let me address Paul's question while I'm trying to find the the next pair. Paul says, off topic, what happens to crypto if the world governments decide to regulate due to cyber hackers using it for ransom payments and tax evasion? Well, that's one of the downfalls. Everybody in that brother is all over uh, crypto. All these governments are all over crypto trying to trying to control crypto. But I, you know, I never really thought about the dark side of it. Okay. And yeah, okay. So you you're familiar with the dark side. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, wow, you know, it's something I never thought about. And and um yeah, I'd love to uh I, I won't say it tonight, but I it, you know without using your name or anything, I would love to um well I guess I already said Paul. So it's it's a Paul. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know that's a that's a dark side I never really thought about. But yeah, there are some dark side things I guess that happen with it. To me, it just seems unstoppable. But and, and the other thing I'm saying is, if something bad happens with government or whatever, it's like a, a few weeks back, the Chinese government or whenever it was, uh, outlawed crypto. And what happened? The crypto went down for one day or a half a day, and then it's it doubled afterwards or whatever. So. Uh, it's been some of the best few weeks afterwards. So you got to, you know, what I'm hoping will happen is let's say things begin to go wrong. Let's say like back here, for instance, just as an example, things begin to go wrong and I'm long this thing and maybe have my profits taken and then I get stopped out. But yeah, there's a lot of things that they, they can't wrap their head around. I didn't, I wasn't thinking in terms of nefarious things, although tax, tax evasion could be one. And I want to flat out say pay your taxes. Like I said last week, I spent three or four days trying to figure out my taxes, and it wasn't like it was a, a shit ton of money or anything. But I wanted to I wanted to make sure that I had my taxes in order and took care of that. So you know, pay your taxes, treat them like capital gains or however. It's interesting. I saw where somebody was reading the infrastructure bill. And they talk about crypto. And it's like, what does crypto have to do in infra infrastructure? But all this stuff gets crammed into these bills, as you probably know. All right, Sherry, thanks for waiting. She was talking about mana. Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> Watch me buy every one of these tonight. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. I would buy that. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's a nice rally. It's It's toward the top of its candle. You know, ideally, I like them when they pull back to the moving average, but this thing has taken off before, got a little ahead of itself. But that looks pretty good. I'm going to put a blue mark next to it for to remind me to take a look at it, okay? Good job, Sherry. Good job, George, too. Jasmine, that one I have traded before. I haven't been sleeping well lately, and it's like I think it's a time change. That did something? I wish you'd just leave the time alone. But uh, I've been really tempted. Of course, we got the alarm set, so I can't I can't leave the house come to my office because it's a separate structure. But yeah, I've been really tempted to. Um, where is it? J A S. I've been really tempted to uh, to come in here. I'm having some issues where I keep losing symbols and have to put them back in and stuff. Anybody else having that? Um, this one's not jumping out at me, John. I hear you. It's a huge deep retracement. Um, you know, I, I probably would have gotten sucked in at the top of this candle here, just because it was going up. And I did buy this one. If this one, when it was like somewhere in here going up, but. Uh, I'm going to pass on that one for now. Now, one thing we'll do in a second, once we get through your picks, is uh, we'll sort by relative strength or uh, actually more correctly, I guess, by the percent change, LRC. 
And that's another thing. I had. There's a lot of things I didn't figure out. I need to write this one down. It's like percent change, but what happens when a new day starts, you know? Okay, let's see if we can find it. LRC. LRC. And you know, it's kind of interesting. It, they, they kind of wait, you know, she got to go home sometime, right? But they kind of wake up uh, around now, around this time at night. And I think that's Asia coming online. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. So in a case like this, you don't want to wait for it to come all the way down to 30 EMA, which is a great pattern. And oh, by the way, for those keeping score, oh, I am long this one, I think. Unless I got stopped out. I bet I got stopped out. I thought it was long. I got I thought it was long, but I think I got stopped out. But anyway, uh look, bar one, bar two, entry would have been right there in the 230. Now. Does this always work this well? No. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. The reason it's working so well is because the market's inefficient. And there's a, a boat ton of greater fools coming in. I talked to someone recently who used to work offshore up until recently. And he said that at night they used to hang out or whatever, but he says now everybody goes to their room and trades shit coins. <laughs> you know? And he said, these guys, some of these guys are making like 200K a year and they're living fairly meager, you know, out in the country or whatever, in a trailer or whatever. Some of them, he said, it, you know, actually in a trailer, they don't have any, they just have a lot of money. So it's exciting to hear that there's a lot of greater fools out there, right? That, that are probably aren't using money management and just kind of like dumping money into these things. And like that one I showed earlier, I already forgot which one it was, Store J. That turned into a losing trade, or would have turned into a losing trade without money management. And that's the beauty of this market, even though it's made up, even though it's BS, okay? So you can't, you know, leave a comment. Oh, so it's made up the DS. So go ahead and leave your comment if you, if you must. But the beauty is, I could show money management. I could show an inefficient market. I could show trends, okay? I can show what happens if you throw caution to the wind. So, yeah, on this one, looks pretty good. John, uh, you know, that's the other thing I was talking about last week is right now, or at least two weeks ago, like right around here, end of October, you could trade a lot of these things as a breakout manner, kind of like the NASDAQ bubble was, you just buy stuff that was going up, right? But eventually it's gonna settle down a bit and it's gonna be more like core methodology. So in this case, you've got this huge uptrend, nice, 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 deep pullback. That looks pretty good. Maybe enter around 260 or so. And then, you know, stop yourself out, maybe about two bucks, so about 60 cents on that. And then I guess you could just broadcast that up. And that's the other thing I could do is start eyeballing my stop and then project it up. And that's what I do in the um, in the core trading service, okay? And I factor in volatility and other things too. But yeah, you can kind of eyeball the volatility. And it's like, okay, well, this thing takes off. It shouldn't really take out this the bottom of the pullback. And oh, by the way, that's one thing I've been doing a lot too is just, I haven't been patient with these things because I do what comes along every day or every or, or every 10 minutes, I should say. But yeah, that looks pretty good. I agree with you on that one. LPT, thanks for keeping the L's together. Now this one's a little extreme in this, in this pullback. But I hear you because it, it took off, got away from itself. It's going to come back. Look at that 30. How crazy is that? It's 100 all the way down. That's a 50% retrace, but all the way down to the 30. But it still looks like it wants to go. And that's just an inefficient market. They can do these crazy things. Now, I would take this trade, but only if I came in and this thing's up like 15% and it's high up in the RS list. Then you got this reversion to the mean move. I know it's kind of extreme to have a 50% retracement, right? But these things are running. And oh, by the way, while we're here, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and I'm just keep I'm, I'm just amazed at how well it works. If you don't walk away with anything, walk away with this. Only buy a crypto that is trading above the 30 EMA. And there's a boat ton of these things that are below the 30 EMA. And they keep going lower, so I wouldn't touch them. And you know, there is a lot of, um, you know, you can get a little sloppy, like you might say, okay, well, let me just go in, let me just buy this and put a stop right here. But you could do something like that because it's such a crazy market. But in general, you really want to be careful with that kind of stuff. And 
you know, that's where the, the discipline could get thrown out the window really quick. How's my E&J doing? <laughs> Let's see, is it over here? It hasn't done anything yet, huh? That's the longest I've held one of these. <laughs> All right, any more crypto before we move on? And then uh, let me just show you, let me just do, let's do an RS scan. Let's see what we can find. And then I'll show you my portfolio. All right, Ace. Now here's something I like, okay? And I, I'm probably not gonna find anything I don't like tonight. This one looks like it could be a little thin, but notice what's going on. It's number one on the RS, it's up 14%. It made this deep retrace down to the 30 EMA. I'm gonna buy it. Might regret it, but I'll buy it. Just to put my money where my mouth is. So Ace, E and J, let's just, and what I'll do is I'll follow up on these and, and we'll follow up next week. But why is this down 15%? Was I the right one? Oh, Ace, USD, USDT. Yeah, it looks good. All right, let's go into market. And so I'll buy it. Where's the stop? I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Uh, really on this one, I'm going to do 20% on IPT. And I'm going to put the stop like down here. Like I don't think it should take out the bottom of this bar. And if it does, it does. I don't care. Okay. I'm not going to be happy about it. Don't get me wrong. But that's where I'll put it. So let me put, uh, I'll put pink on this one. It means I need to do something. Maybe come back in later tonight and do something. You know, here's here's the I'll, I'll give you another frustrating thing. Um, I don't know if it was doing last week's show or whatever. I bought one, and I put a little pink on, it thinking I would come back after I went and you know had supper or whatever. And I came back in and it, it had like shot way up and then came out here. It came back in. Luckily, I was able to get a little bit off of it. Dream. Now, see, I wouldn't go after this one. This one looks. Kind of crazy. Maybe it starts rallying like crazy, but I would just sit on that one for a little while. That one, eh, you see this long tail? These long tails in here might be a little thin. Let's see if we can find something kind of interesting. Now, here's one below the 30. I just leave it alone, okay? Because you can find stuff that looks better. Mana looks okay. This one, I've been kind of keeping an eye on. I know you've got this first, this stupid little spike here. I don't know if that's real or not. Um, if it was, hopefully you're able to get out. But see, this one looks kind of interesting to me. Now, I don't know if it's thick enough to trade, but I like this one, okay? I do. And, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Everything looks good in a webinar, right? I, I'm, I'm tempted to buy that one, too, because it's high on the RS list. It looks kind of interesting. What is this? SCLP. Now, remember, I'm going to use, if I'm playing a breakout like this, I'm going to use a pretty tight stop. like. Maybe on this one, like four or maybe like maybe like 420 or something. I don't want this thing to come right back in on me. But that looks kind of interesting. So I'll, let me just put a blue thing next to it. So as you can see, sometimes you can just go through up to the below the below 30, leave it alone. And you could just buy the ones that are going up. I'm along this one. So cyan means I'm long. I'm already long. I bought the breakout. I don't know exactly where. This might have been a 2.30 EMA play, because I am trying to do a few of those, just so I can show you that I'm actually doing a few of those here and there. But let's see, I don't know if that cleared it or not, but bar one, bar two, so the entry would have been here. I don't know when I got where I got in this one, but I could find out. So anyway, you get the idea. Now, here's the other thing too. Now, you see this one, some of these short things were up quite a bit earlier today, and you could actually buy the short ones. This one's caught my eye a few times. I may have traded it, I don't remember. Anyway, you kind of get the idea there. Let me show you my open portfolio. Everything in blue is something I was looking at at some point in time, okay? Uh, orange means I'm long, but it might be in a different account and I need to just, it, it's just a different kind of flagging for a purple. So just if you see an orange, it's the same as a purple, but I've got some personal, notes on those things okay because you can see right here i got chr and a purple but i also have it as an orange too okay just means it's in more than one account sand has been phenomenal let's take a look at sand okay um now here's the thing look i'll show you live right here did it add on earlier today and so far it hasn't done much on that add-on okay and i just bought it because it was going up and if i'd have seen it 
like on this bar here, I, per, I probably would have bought it a little bit uh, earlier, or I forget where I got it in the original position. But you can see it, it took off and made a nice little pullback, 230 EMA, if you want to go with that, if you want to go with the pullback. But good looking, uh, good looking thing. Alice, I'm long. Now this one can be a little thin, as you can see. I think I bought that earlier, CHR we talked about. Wax P, I already took the IPT on, I think, on this one. Maybe not. ABBC, you can see you got in here. Okay, so far so good. This one did really well earlier today. You can see it took off, or, or two days ago, whenever that was, but I'm free rolling on that. There's that Wax P again. Yeah, I thought I hit the IPT. I don't know why I have it in purple in here. But one of these is uh, one of these needs, needs to come out. One of these is like Binance or something. This is a different exchange. Anyway, everything agreed. I'm free rolling. Oh, this is uh, Crypto.com. Okay, this thing has just been on a tear. I've been in and out of it a couple times, and uh, I think I have like one and a half position on on looking to flip out some more. I've been in this one for a long time. It's doing good so far. So good. Knock on wood. There's sand again. Ace, did I just buy that one? E and J, I just bought. Okay, see what happens. Root, I think I have a small position in this one. That's why it's pink. Anyway, so you get the idea. Sometimes you just buy them when they're going up. Uh, pullbacks to the 30 EMA. If it's if it's way far away from the uh, 30 EMA, maybe a deep pullback. If you get a deep pullback and they're high, not relative strength list, those have been working the best for me with the exception of sometimes the ones that are just going straight up like the CRO. All right, we got time for two more, and we really got to get into stocks. I'll go. I'm glad to see the interest. So I was almost ready to give up on the on the crypto because, like, okay, I did my duty showing you this. Think Because I, I think there's something uh, possibly wonderful here. And then uh, nobody seemed that interested. And I got to think of the – like, last Friday, I had a couple of beers, and I was thinking – came in here and looked at a few coins for bed. And I'm thinking, you know – Maybe I'm being this this Judas goat leading everybody to slaughter with this stuff. I used to like Algo. I don't know what happened here with this crazy tail, uh, but I don't like it now. It's below the 30. Let's just forget about that one for now. Cherry. Soul's one that I really, really used to like. And actually, that's one of my problems is, is when you start to look into these things, then you start to get an opinion. And Soul seems like it's something kind of viable. Uh, some of the ones I'm doing really well on, though, are stupid stuff like uh, sand. I think is a game where you could buy, you could buy some digital properties. Okay, see, Soul's under 30, so let's just forget about her for now, and let's do this. But this one seems like one that's going to be a little bit more viable. But hey, not doing it too well now, right? Now, one thing I've stopped myself short of doing. Because I do have a life, or I need, I used to have a life at least, is looking at 50 minute charts. But I think if you, if you wanted to get super active, or as I said before, get the reps in on this stuff, then yeah, okay, something like Soul. That, so we got bar one, we need bar two, and then we need the third bar or whatever bar to trigger on that. So yeah, Sherry, hold off on those for now and work about uh, bigger ones. How do I position size? Right now, because these accounts are relatively small, I'm just throwing a thousand dollars at each one. Okay. Thousand dollars, 20, 20% profit target, maybe something like this. So you would use a 10% profit target because it, the volatility isn't there. The stop would be, you know, if you plan a breakout in this in this in the crypto comes back into where it broke out from then you know you're wrong. I mean, like on this day here, I'd be willing to bet I played this one and I could probably go look at my records and see. So like on this bar here, let's say you bought it towards the top of the candle, then my stop will go right below that low. Now, as you know, in stocks, that really doesn't work that well, right? Because stocks are more efficient. In IPO, sometimes you can do something somewhat similar to that. Right now in crypto, I think you could do that. So let's say you were unfortunate enough and like some of the ones you saw in my portfolio, I was it came in really, really late or the damn thing rallied overnight. So let's say you bought the sole right here. Well, if it comes all the way back into the bottom of this bar, then you're wrong. So you bought it here, stopped out, so what? You know what? These things are like a bus, more will come along. 
The other thing I haven't wrapped my head completely around is they heat up and cool off. So like I'll spend hours looking at these things and just kind of spin my wheels. But then it's like, if I go off and do something else and then I come back, like right now, for instance, looks like Asia's coming online or somebody's coming online. So maybe, and I haven't figured it all out. I got a lot of questions, but maybe I'd be better off not spending so much time trying to force something to happen, but just come come in when the tide's the tide's moving. You're welcome, George. George says, thanks, helps a lot. Yeah, yeah, and believe me, it's a work in progress, but the beauty is money management works here and inefficient market trading works here. And it's just, it's just fun to watch all this stuff unfold. Now, here's one of the downsides, as I've been saying, is I think as the money becomes real, it's gonna be harder and harder to have so much fun. You know, I wouldn't willy-nilly drop 10K or 20K or 30K in stocks in the middle of this webinar if it were possible to buy them right but it's easy to just drop a couple of k here and there and by the end of the webinar we'll see where we are and uh or later tonight and then we'll go from there all right everybody should be seeing let's take a look at stocks real quick i, I haven't completely forgotten about stocks i just want to kind of get all this crypto stuff out the way All right, let's take a look. Uh, we're at the NASDAQ, so let's take a look at that. NASDAQ had an okay day, about a half percent, and it's right at all-time high, so I'm not going to argue with that. I would like to see it bust out to all-time highs and not look back for a while. Anybody know what the futures are right now? I've got my screens behind the screen. Uh, S&P 500 dipped a little today, came back up. We're right at all-time highs. I'm not going to argue with that. You know me. I like to see it bust into all-time highs and rally for a while before a meaningful correction again we had a little bit of correction in here so far so good obviously the breakout remains intact so that's pretty good now russell's having a meaningful correction as you can see okay even is up three fantastic thank you sam russell is pulling back in here as you can see i'm not gonna get too excited about the pullback as long as we remain outside of this base and this is going to be crucial so you guys watch and girls, 230, if we drop below 230, I don't know, I would begin to worry a little bit or I would just, all bets are off, okay? As far as the Russell is concerned. But right now, the Russell looks poised to make a new leg higher, okay? But for now, I would hold off. Yeah, uh, uh, keep your stock picks coming. Be happy to look at those. Energy's a little, lose a little steam in here, like I said tonight to my peeps in the service. They're below, they're below all three. Um, moving average, both have moving average. I'm sorry, I was trying to multiprocess. You can see how good I am at that, huh? Actually, you know, your brain can only process sequentially. That's why testing is driving and driving is dangerous. I know some of you text and trade and drive and scalp and bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> I know you'd be listening to this anyway to work tomorrow, so. Uh, gold came in a little bit, as did silver. I'm not really seeing any stocks getting excited about here just yet, but I'm keeping an eye out for them. Retail busted out to new highs with vigor today, so that's encouraging. Transports have pulled back into here, but you can see they've been in a pretty nice trend as of late. As I preach, I like the semis to confirm what I'm seeing in indices, and look at what the semis did today. All-time highs, 1.71% higher. The gap open. Didn't do a whole lot from the gap, but they did survive the dip. So, so far, so good on the semis. All right, you'll take a look at, uh, yeah, just everything for, from now on. Just put it, put it in a ticker. You know, the state ticker. So, I'll, I don't know. We're not going to go back to crypto right now. Yeah, coin could set up soon. I'm watching it, okay? Um, if you wanted to be aggressive, maybe above this little pivot point here, I'd like to see it pull back a little bit more. But I think I think coin can go. I really do. And I'm still bullish on crypto, and I've got a list of crypto stocks. They didn't do too well today, but I think that they're, they might uh, take off soon. Okay, B buy is that Best Buy, B B U Y, or are you saying something else? B B U Y O P. I'm not sure what you, you're asking, um, George. Okay, Paul, let's talk about coffee. Yeah, coffee's going up. Okay. Uh, this ETF's real thin, but I'm sure because it's backed by coffee and arbitrage, it would probably be okay to trade, but don't take my advice on that. I like the way it broke out, Paul, and then maybe on a pullback, it might be worth a shot, okay? You're welcome, Sam. 
Okay, any more while we're waiting on George? You're welcome, Paul. Anytime, man, anytime. And, you know, bring them up in Facebook. If you're in Facebook, we could talk about them there too. STRN for Mr. John, STRN. Yeah, I like this one. Um, I don't know if I put it on a Landry list or not because it was lower priced. It it could use a tiny bit more pullback, believe it or not, but well, it's okay, it's okay. Um, because it was lower priced in an IPO, I was a little leery of it. It seems like below $5 is a little tricky with IPOs. And I know, John, you, you trade a lot of IPOs, so let me know your experience there. I did break my rule with one of them recently that did really well for a while, but it was the trigger ended up being over six. But I do like this one. And this one is on, I have a momentum list I keep over here. And let me see if I can find it right here. It's got 126 stocks in it. And I know this is in here somewhere. Let's see. Uh, right there. So I'm watching it. I'm watching you. What's, Kow What's his name? Wachowski? <laughs> SDRN. I have a friend of, my wife has a friend. She does cartoon voices. It's kind of funny. She does that one really well. ARBE. Uh, since it's an IPO, I know I don't usually confuse issue with facts, but what does ST, what does uh, the one we just looked at do? ARBE Robotics, too thin, probably too thin. So be careful in that one. I do kind of like the way it looks. Not a big fan of this big tail here, but I do like the way this one looks. Um, yeah, that's a great looking stock, but boy, it's thin. So uh, who brought that one up? John, yeah, be careful. Uh, Hotel California. Was that you or John Z came up with that? Uh, Hotel California is when you get a thin IPO and then you regret it later. I do like this one. A little bit more pullback would be nice. It is on a little bit on the thin side, and this might be why I didn't put in the Landry list tonight. But I like that one too, John. Good, uh, good pick. Kind of thin now. Too many ex-girlfriends on Facebook. <laughs> well, John, you can join as your dog. If if you're a gold member, join as your dog. <laughs> Uh, join join as your dog or something and just let me know who you are. MJ or MSOS, do you think cannabis breakout has officially failed? Well, let's see. Ooh, yeah. You know, it's funny. These things were in favor and boy, they uh not anymore. Huh. Look at that. And you know, you confuse the issue with facts. You would think that this administration would be more um Cannabis friendly, or I'm sure it is. MSOS, yeah, you know that's a that's another pot ETF. That's actually not horrible looking because it took off and it did a deep retracement. But you know, if you did go after it, be careful. I wouldn't call that a complete failure just yet because I like this gap here. You will have a little overhead supply to deal with, but I hear what you're saying. So in general, they're failing. Yeah, you're right. I think that you're right based on those two at least. But this one might could work. George is waiting on an entry on ENJ. I've already forgotten, did I buy it? I think I did. <laughs> I'm still laughing at the ex-girlfriend's thing. Well, that could be, I guess I better not get into your business. So if, you, if you're not married, I guess that could be okay. John Z, okay, John Z came out with Hotel California. That's when you buy a stock and then you regret it later because it gets really thin. Thanks again, Dave. Love the she www show, I guess is what you're saying. Shoo. <laughs> really great shoe. Took me a second to get that one. Thank you. All right. Any more while we're in pass? Trigger stop under th third. Okay, you triggered an ENJ. All right, that's cool. Let's see what's let's see what's doing over here. ENJ. ENJ. Well, I got to remember to come back in tonight and set some set some uh, stops and stuff. E and J, let's see what's happening. Yeah, it looks pretty good, huh? What did I trigger in? I wonder. Let's see if I get a trade history on this. So I bought, I did buy this one, right? I bought it a little while ago. And let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I bought E and J at three twenty two forty four. It's not doing much yet, but we'll see. All right, let's see real quick. Let's do this. All right, any more while we're in pass? 
Well, while we're in impasse, I do want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, bring them up in Facebook. And if you're not in Facebook, you could shoot me an email, davelander.com slash contact. And just give, be patient with me there. I've been a little, I'm probably, uh, well, I'm about 50,000 emails behind, so it'll be a while. Yes, I have $21 profit in ENJ. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll put an IPT and we'll see what happens. All right, thanks everybody. I really enjoyed you guys' uh, interaction tonight. It was you made the show so easy easy for me. So thank you so much. If we don't talk between now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. Oh, no show next week. It's Thanksgiving in the states. So everyone here that's in the states, happy Thanksgiving. Everyone else, happy Thursday. <laughs>